Hey, what the hell's going on, you guys? It is Tuple Player Negative AE, and welcome to the last episode of the prologue, prologue day three. Um, we're still serving drinks to dogs. I'm still interested to hear what happened with the bathroom, because I know that was a thing. Uh, but we'll see what happens. Uh, you look bum, boss. Starting tomorrow, there will be no more corgis in our bar. Why wouldn't I be sad? Maybe because starting tomorrow, there will be no corgis in the bar. Uh, I wonder if the Shiba Appreciation Society might be interested in booking us. One problem at a time, boss. Wait, I know someone from the Pomeranium Development Institute. One problem at a time. Still, you've been tense ever since Friday. Are you worried about Gil or something? Trust me, of all my worries, Gil is the least of them. Put on some music and enjoy the day, won't you? Right. I wish I could just pick random. Let's go all the way to the end, shall we? We'll go from the bottom up. Which city? The assignment. Follow the trail. Out of orbit. City that never sleeps. Uh, drunken dream. Uh, neon district. Digital dive. With renewed hope we... The answer lies within. Synth the stitch. Uh, A Renee. Oh, Glitch City sounds intense. Times to mix drinks and change lives. Bartender, we meet again. Oh, Miss Betty. Hello. I am Mr. Corgi Lover. Call me Deal. Deal. Deal? Deal. Work that satisfied look off your faces, you two. <laughs> uh, what can I serve you today? I'll have a beer. I'm not the designated driver today, so give me a fringe weaver. Alright, coming right up. I need one fringe weaver and one beer. One, one, two. One, one, two. One, two, three, four. Uh, and all mixed. One, two, three, here. And I need a fringe weaver. Uh, which is one Adele hide and nine. Oops. One Adele hide and nine. Oh. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Fringe Weaver and a beer. Here. Thanks. Thank you. You seem distracted. Having ser have serving so many dogs finally gotten to you? No. Well, yeah, but it's not that. Man, Glitch City is intense. Is this still Glitch City? My boss has been acting weird since Friday. Weird how? Romantic weird? Drug addict weird? Let's hope nobody finds the body in the fridge weird? For starters, there's the fact that she told me we were only being booked moments before we opened. Plus, she complete she seems completely distracted or lost in her thoughts. Like you. Worse. Oh. <laughs> She's not being herself, and that makes me wonder if something's going on. Like what? Do you run a human trafficking ring in the basement? No, we don't have a license for that. Oh, well, thinking about it too much is not part of my job. Can I ask you something about your job? Sure. I've always been curious. What does the BTC need in their bartenders? What do you need to study? They train you from scratch, so they don't have to study any so you don't have to study anything beforehand. What does the training involve? It's a lot of etiquette and regulation work. Most of our time though is spent is actually spent in simulations. Simulations? Different scenarios involving involving different chemical hazards, that sort of thing. They want you to be able to respond to every possible situation that might come up involving our ingredients. I mean, the chances for failure are really slim, but it's better not to take those chances. Let's see. I'll be back with you guys in a bit. I must attend to the other clients. Dogs. The... Oh, sure. 
They are chasing me, man. Ooh. The cabbages, man. The goddamn cabbages, Mr. Puff. <laughs> they are everywhere. They are out for my rump. You're... Never mind. Can I get you anything to calm down? A big blue fairy would be nice. He wants a big blue fairy. One, uh, one, two, three, four. One, 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 two, three, four. One, one. Aged and mixed. That is a big blue fairy. Here. Thanks. Very nice of you. Third bark day. Die. Something to matter? Nothing a drink won't or can't solve. Not sure about that, but it's hardly my job to preach sobriety. What do you want? Give me a gut punch. This flea bag wants a gut punch. Man, Jill is not a fan of dogs. Uh, aged and mixed. You really only need to do it for like two seconds and it's done. I was over here waiting four seconds and it's like, just two seconds. I like how I like realized that in the prologue. Have you ever felt guilty for being born in the wrong race? The what now? I've just been hearing so much about how we're racist. I'm wondering... Are you racist? Not really. Do you feel like other corgis might be? Definitely, I mean... Then why worry? It's not like they're calling you racist. You shouldn't take generalizations personally. You might be right. Man, you should have seen the cutie I saw yesterday on the way home. She looked like a cat boomer. She was wearing a mini dress and had this prosthetic eye. I know her. I thought you were against people using prosthetics. I'm not against cute though. Besides, I'm not against prosthetics, I'm only against enhancements. I don't see a difference between the two. Alright, let me put it this way. If you lost an arm and replaced it with a mechanical arm that does exactly what the older one did, then I'm okay with it. But, if you lost your arm and replaced it with a gun-loaded super arm from hell, that's something I'm not okay with. Even worse is if you decide to replace your arm because of fashion or a whim, or to get better at some sport. That's completely not cool. That's the difference between a prosthetic and an enhancement. Replace, replacement versus or enhancement. I'm of a similar opinion about Lilim replacing their factory parts for kicks. If you think that's going to be an easy way of getting better at something, then you're in for a bad surprise. But I can see why you think that, but what suggested to you... What suggested to you that what she had wasn't an enhancement. If she had bad eyesight, wouldn't that count as an enhancement, even if it fixes it? How does reparative work factor into your ideologies? They might be enhancements, but they're also replace something faulty. Well, uh... Damn it, stop making sense, you piece of scrap. You're weakening my resolve. <laughs> Having fun? Oh, bartender. That was fast. Uh, there seem to be less dogs out today. At least, dogs that want to drink. Yeah, some of them ate their tickets. Lovely. I'll be the one dealing with that later. Say, uh, what's your take on the whole enhancement discussion, bartender? My mom had a saying, uh, anyone can make a chandelier out of their asses. Which somehow means your body, your choice. <laughs> okay. A weird saying. If they're not hurting anyone, I don't see the point in hating them. See, Betty? Hey, I didn't say I automatically hate anyone who has an enhancement. Me being against something isn't the same as me being against someone. I'm not some 12-year-old blindingly hating someone because of something like that. Maybe you should practice what you preach. What does that mean? I fear retaliation, so I'm not saying another word. I like the song. The syncopation, though. Are you two gonna order anything? 
I'm fine right now. Uh, she's drinking mine, actually. Alright, call if you need anything else. Sure. Let's see. Ow. So much for avoiding retaliation. Poop eater. Not gonna believe me. I was in the bathroom, and this other dog was looking at me from the top of the sink. You mean the mirror? No, another dog. I see. What can I serve you? You're not gonna do anything about that other dog on top of the sink? I'm sure he doesn't want to hurt anybody, so don't worry. I hope you're right. Well, I want something really sweet. Coming right up. This pup wants something sweet. By flavor, sweet. We're gonna give him a simple sugar rush. Even though I messed it up. Because I am done. Like, literally a second and a half. <laughs> I have to do that. Uh, thanks. Please think about the thing with the other dog on top of the sink. I will, don't worry. Well then. That was quick. Like I said, there aren't too many dogs today. When I heard someone booked us for three days, I expected more of an attendance. While you were gone, this fella here said that the bleeding drain Jane is better than a pile driver. Please prove him wrong. All I'm saying is that I don't see a point in drinks that feel more like a kick in the mouth than a beverage. What do you think, bartender? Uh, you think there's any point discussing non-alcoholic drinks in a bar? In my opinion, people who order a bad touch always make me giggle like an idiot then. That's not an opinion, that's a statement. Oh, well, please serve us either pile drivers or bleeding Janes. We'll let you decide which one is better. Alright, well, I don't really care for bleed, er, uh, Bloody Marys in real life. At all. So what I will do... Is I'm gonna go ahead and say Pile Driver. Because... Uh, I like Pile Drivers. <laughs> Alright, I assume... I, okay, I don't like at all alcohol. So, saying that I like a uh, specific alcohol weird for me to say. Uh, but, if I had to choose between a Bloody Mary or some other alcoholic drink, I would probably choose the other alcoholic drink. You know? Like, I feel like that's half a second that I did that for, and it's like, yeah, it's ready. Maybe I just need to press press. I'm gonna try that if it gives me another drink. Here. Jackpot! Oh, well. How did you two end up discussing that? Well, it started when I told this guy I wasn't as crazy about the idea of just working for corgis. Working just for corgis. Why, don't you like corgis? They're cute and fluffy and funny, and they just, like, make you smile. Tell me one interesting thing about them. Legends say they were created by a fairy and that their breed was raised to fight dragons. Oh, you have to be kidding. No, actually, I heard that one too. Really? So, I can't see why you're so tired of them. I don't know. Is it because I only ever deal with them at their worst? You've only seen them in their happy state. I'm the one running feces samples and unclogging their sphincters if they eat their own if they eat their owner's dental flosses. I might be their veterinarian, but they treat me more like a mom and not in a good way. It's like being a gynecologist. After a while you stop seeing boobs and vaginas. Instead you all you see are issues you must fix. At least they are cute issues. Depends. A gynecologist can't pick clients by age or preferences. I was talking about your job. <laughs> oh yeah, that too. Still, I don't think it's so much that I'm tired of them as it is I'm tired of you being so obsessed with them. I'm not obsessed, I'm passionate. I sleep with a corgi plushie and have a wall dedicated to photos you've taken of the company. I'm really passionate? Too much passion would become an issue, you know. Speaking of issues, did you talk with the directors about the whole cardigan conflict? I was going to do that tomorrow when they're all together. But I still don't see why I should be the one doing it. For starters, they don't take me too seriously. Understandable, I don't take you seriously either. I mean, in the end, they're still just dogs. They need someone with a strong commanding voice. 
Are you saying I have a naggy voice? No, not your voice. Just your entire demeanor. <laughs> so I have a naggy demeanor. I'm assuming you two are talking about the whole race conflict. Yeah, this is hurting them more than they think. The company might actually collapse at this rate. Which is terrible because a couple of dogs of these dogs' families are dependent on their paychecks. Doesn't that count as unethical and unusual treat treatment of animals? It's a bit of a legal gray area. The dogs are doing it willingly, after all. And even if they weren't doing it willingly, the dogs aren't actually being mistreated or exploited. In fact, the company's pretty relaxed. Speaking of relaxed, how's Jurgen doing? He's fine. Still complaining about his back. Still unwilling to take his medicine. Saying, he says he's not that weak. Who's this Jurgen guy? My guardian. I passed the test years ago, but I couldn't leave him. I, that's actually commonplace, isn't it? Willing being unable to leave their guardians because they feel too much like family? Now, to be fair, people get attached to too many things. Some even get obsessed with inanimate objects. My grandpa loved his car more than any of his sons. Uh, the one who's left all his earthly possessions to his car, right? Uh, yeah, that one. How do you become a Lilum's guardian? You fill a form at the Artificial Intelligence Council. AIC. Uh, then they do a background check. If you deem them use if they deem you useful, they'll give you authorization. You're given a week's notice before they give you all the data about the Lilum you'll be taking care of. You have to watch over it until you can pass three different personality tests. If the Lilum wants to stay with you after that, that's your problem. So it's like an adoption and the lottery all rolled into one. They do that to diversify the possible outcomes. Two Lilum can be of the same model, but they'll grow differently depending on their guardians. What if something happens to the guardian? A new guardian can appeal to the council, stating they're more fit for the position than the original. This happens when a guardian has become unavailable in some way, or because you can back up claims of neglect and maltreatment. Uh, you spit out all that information like it's hard-coded in you. I worked in that department for some time before coming to the SDC. It's almost a reflex. Are you interested in becoming a guardian, bartender? I don't know. I'm just a nerd when it comes to AIs in general. The money they give you for it is not that great, though. I see. Well, time to check on the dogs. Money Shredder. Listen here, punk. Sorry I didn't mean to call you a punk, I just... I was chasing my tail and now I'm too hyper to control myself. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Just give me anything. This dog wants anything. I need that... There's like a thing that makes you like pass out or some shit. Uh, I forget what it's called. Uh... Yeah, this one. Soft. Makes you calm down a little bit. Aged and... Oh my god, you just have to double tap it. Oh, I was over here waiting four seconds. It was like, you gotta wait a little bit. No, you just tap it. That's crazy. All in the prologue. Phew, that's better. Thanks, punk. Now, see, I can see the value of other dog races. Like Pomeranians? Those are nice, but they aren't corgis. Well, yeah, I can understand that. I mean, I remember that cute girl from yesterday. Or remember that cute girl from yesterday I mentioned? Yeah. The white knight that was with her? She wasn't half bad either. I mean, it was obvious that a tapestry of muscles was hidden under her armor. But I prefer more delicate looking girls, though. You can appreciate how something looks, but that doesn't mean it's your, necessarily your thing. And you, bartender? Me, what? Which dog race do you prefer? That's not the question I was expecting. Not much of a dog person, actually. I thought so. You have any pets? A cat named Four, yeah. He's just a stray I rescued. Do you like rescuing girls too? 
I'm sure I should be making a witty retort right now, but I'm just gonna go ahead and say no. Weird, I've always thought that the rescue fantasy was universal. Why call it four? Four is a Lilim I met some time ago that... Never mind. Pretty lame name if you ask me. Better than calling it Ass Hat. I bet when you and four play, it's quite the sight, huh? He's so lively, sometimes I fear four shadows my presence entirely. You guys want to lose consciousness that much? You really need to calm down with the whole pun hating stuff, <laughs> Petty. But to move away from this whole foreground, what's this rescue fantasy you mentioned before? You know the one where wayward dangerous souls redeem themselves through the power of love? The bad boy who turns away a life of crime. The drug addict girl who lived on the streets and turned tricks until she found a good man worth changing for. It's corny romance cliches 101. Well, you're the one with the shelf full of old lady romance novels, I'll trust you on this. Hey, Fabio is the 13th national- wait. Fabio the 13th is a national treasure. Um, you don't even like guys, why do you read all these novels? Uh, they let you put yourself in the place of the main character quite easily. Even if said main character is a muscular man? I see no problem. Just, what is your self-image? If I can ask something else, what is it? Why do you hate puns so much? Many people cringe at puns, you know? Yeah, but you react like you have a vendetta against them. They made me feel stupid. Uh, what? When I was a kid, everyone in my house had a penchant for making puns at the drop of a hat. I was the only one who couldn't get them. Years later, I finally got them, and they weren't that funny. They made me feel stupid. All in the name of some terrible joke that wasn't even funny in the first place. I said this so many times, I might as well just make it a recording, but you need to chill out, Betty. I am chilling out. Just because I complain about stuff doesn't mean I'm not relaxed. I'm not sure that's how it works. Trust me, when I'm tense and angry, you'll know it. I fear the thought. I like Betty a lot. Anyway, I'll go check on the dogs. Uh, I'm supposed to be their doctor and they're suspiciously quiet. Be careful. You want anything else? I'll have a bloom light, actually. Make that two, please. Two bloom lights. I feel like I make bloom lights the least. Is that wrong to say? What's the least made drink in this game? Aged on the rocks and mixed. I hate that you just have to... You just have to double tap it. I'm over here waiting four seconds of my time. What? Wait, did I mess that up? Oh, it's not aged and mixed. I was like, oh, maybe you don't. Maybe I'm just like blowing smoke up my ass. No, you do. That's, just... That's crazy. Here. Thanks. Say, you two seem to get along quite well. Well, when you're only when you're the only sentient humanoids in the entire company, it kind of happens. Sentient. We have a couple of test mannequins and cardboard cutouts. So. I see. There's more to it than just that, though. I mean, even if you two are the only ones of your kind, you can still hate each other. Well, I guess I'm one of the few that can stand Betty. She's a really nice person, but she doesn't sugarcoat things. Yeah, I can see that. You should see her treating those dogs. She becomes so patient and understanding, even if it's only for a little while. The dogs don't call her mom to mock her. Can dogs mock people? I don't know. Even if it's only for a little while. You were eavesdropping? So you can say nice things once in a while. You say it like I'm the aggressive one here. It's nice hearing people say good things about you once in a while, you know? You should take your own advice. Maybe some other time. I'm not a hug box. Anything happen? A dog in the bathroom got angry at its reflection on the mirror and changed, charged into it. Luckily, nothing bad happened. It just made the dog very confused. 
How the hell did they get on top of the sinks? They're surprisingly agile, even with those stubby little legs. Oh yeah, I ordered you this. Ah, thanks. By the way, Betty, how's Veronica? She... Betty and Veronica? Hmm... Broke up last month. Well, things were not going so well. We got used to one another. We got too used to one another? Everything was starting to become routine. We decided to break up before things got better. And why didn't you tell me that before? Why? Did you want your turn to at the Betty Mobile? <laughs> uh, I don't know. I guess I just didn't want to trouble you. That's hilarious. I gotta use that one. And after a while, it stopped feeling like it was something revel re relevant to say. Please don't do that again. Try trusting me. Yeah, you're right. You know what bothers me? The fact that asking for someone's... Asking after someone's health always make you feel like you're walking on a floor full of glass shards. There's always this chance that the other person is not okay or even dead. And what started as a legitimately fun moment can go sour. Yeah, you're right. Sorry for not trusting you, you piece of scrap. Don't worry, I understand why you did it. Hey, now that you think about it, you sure hang out with us a lot, bartender. Dogs can be only be so interesting, and besides, there haven't been as many dogs today. My presence unwanted? Not at all, especially since you're the one bringing all the booze. You like those cab drivers that like to chat all the way, but... Wait. But you smell better than most of them. <laughs> Thank you. The funny thing is that we are unofficially associated with a local taxi line. Uh, they're the ones that send drunkards to their homes. You seem to really like talking to your clients, like it's the best part of your job or something. It kind of is. I used to sit around in, a crow in crowded places like malls or bars to think to myself, and think to myself, every, each and every person here has a story. It's a humbling experience. Everyone has dreams, fears, and loved ones. If you dig deep enough, you'll realize that the gap between two random people isn't as big as you think it is. In fact, it's quite small. And in this job, you get to hear all kinds of stories. Some people just blurt it all out. Some do it while drunk. To know that no matter how similar they might seem to be at first glance, no two people are alike. It's fascinating. You can be a powerful information broker with all that knowledge. Nah, not interested. I like to see myself as more of a friendly ear than someone you need to be wary of. I guess there's still decent folks out there. I'm not decent? You're critically obsessed with dogs. I'll go check if there's any other dogs who want something. Go ahead. Gruff bucket. Quick, a beer. Okay. He's also in a hurry. I feel like this one is way longer than the other one. You know? There you go. All mixed. Crazy. Thanks. Now, boom. Why did you break the glass? I made breakfast. Get it? Because you made the drink fast and I broke it and... Go. Tough crowd. Suddenly I understand the hate for puns. Hey, bat render. Yeah? Your job has a... <laughs> Your job has a funny name. You don't say. How was she already drunk? She drank way less than she did last night. Yeah, but she drank a bottle before coming here. Why? I wish I knew. It's an example of her alcohol tolerance, though. Bar bra bra denter. I want to make a toast to my good friend the robot here. Probably the only person robot thing that can understand my yapping, or that can stand my yapping for more than half an hour. Without him, my job would be five times more boring and my life two times more meaningless. Cheers. You're not holding a drink. And give me one, Ben Ten Trader. It's n is isn't that your job? I need a beer, a big one. She wants a big beer. 
I should really know how to make a beer by this point. One, one, two, one, one, two, one, two, three, four. One, one, two, one, one, two, one, two, three, four. Uh, and that's it. All right, cheers. I said cheers. 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 Good. Grumpy and sober and his sweetheart went drunk. It seems like... It seems like she's been like this ever since her university years. You make it sound like those were a decade ago. Ahem. I can understand liking the taste of alcohol, but what's so good about getting drunk? Uh, first of all, I'm not drunk. You're too happy. I'm a happy person. When drunk. <laughs> anyway, it's something you just can't explain. You just like it. Your body needs it. Craves it. It's called being an alcoholic. I prefer the term alcohol enthusiast. Anyway, humans actively look for the things that make them feel lightheaded. Why else would they leave some poison in potentially... Wait. Some poison in potentially poisonous foods like that weird balloon fish thing? Why would they eat spicy food or drink fermented milk? Seriously, how crazy does someone need to be to say, hey, let's eat this and see what happens? Worse yet, they've found medicine... They've even found medicine among all that junk. The one that invented penicillin was probably the worst of them all. Fair enough, but see, that's proof you're drunk. If you were sober, you would just say, hell if I know. Silly robot. Now that I think about it, what kind of robot are you? Hello? Well, I'm always sound too feminine. Okay. Okay, then what piece of scrap are you? You don't know? Never cared, but now I'm curious. Well, you won't remember it tomorrow. I'm a DT-01D, a social development robot. Is that like the DFC-72s? No, DFC-72s are designed to be physically human, as physically human as possible in order to blend in with humans better. My line is more tailored for resilience. We are work little. Uh, why must you be cursed to only one destiny from the moment you were born? You can do whatever you want, silly robot. Follow your dreams. I know, I'm already doing it. Being created or hardwired for one duty only means you're adept at certain things. Giving robots freedom of choice? That's the whole purpose of the ADM law. Yeah, but you know, you say you're resilient, but you don't look the part. True, I never upgraded my muscles, but I can stand up to 200 degrees Celsius without breaking a sweat. Well, can sweat? Cooling agents, yes. Uh, no matter, you're still special to me no matter what kind of robot you are. Lil. No matter what piece of shit you are. <laughs> Speaking of special, how come it isn't legal to marry a dog yet? Excuse me, what? If humans are allowed to marry robots, Lilum, I mean Lilum, they should be able to marry dogs too. Abtrender. That's me, I think. This guy here wants to bang a dog. Mock him. Excuse me? I do not. I was just saying that if humans are allowed to marry Lilum, why shouldn't they be able to marry animals? Because first of all, they're not humanoids. What about monkeys then? Now you want to bang a monkey? I do not. And second of all, dogs, just like many other animals, can't give you consent. But look at these dogs. Sure, they have cognitive abilities of seven-year-olds, but they can talk, drink booze, and argue. So now you want to bang a seven-year-old? We have a regular here who would be delighted to hear that. Stop it. Remember, little human marriages were only sanctioned after the Lulub fu achieved full sentience. And even then, they used marriage as a way to evolve the collective source. Besides, dog don't re dogs don't really love that us that way. Trying to apply human ideas to marriage, like marriage to a dog, is like like trying to feed vegetables to a carnivore. You get me? Says the ex-vegetarian. Why are you only so smart when you're drunk? I'm not drunk. But anyways, if you want to screw with a dog or chip, go ahead. Just don't bring marriage or influence into the whole deal. Deal. But if you, even if you start thinking about doing the horizontal mambo with a seven-year-old. The Horizontal Mambo? Please seek some mental help. 
Uh, I don't want to bang dogs or monkeys or seven-year-olds. Well, thank God. Then why did you suddenly start talking about dog-human marriage? It's just... I was thinking about all these dogs and tuxedos and... I started picturing a dog in a bridal dress. I mean, just try and picture that. And I'm the drunk one. Wait, I'm not drunk. Why would I say that? Then again, you get drunk... Wait, when you get drunk, you only get dizzy. You have a limit, as in a limit to how much you can drink before passing out. No, I just get disoriented to the point where I'm effectively useless, or I never, but I never pass out. Maybe if I passed out, I wouldn't have to deal with all the shit that follows. I always have to wait at least 24 hours before the effects pass. One has to wonder why they gave all the, the human flo those human flaws to Lilum. I read something about that. It said by giving Lilum the same kind of weaknesses humans have, they would develop the same way humans do. So that's why they also bite their lips randomly when eating? Seems like it. But it makes me wonder, exactly how atomically correct are you? That's something I know and you don't. <laughs> and if you want anything else to drink? Yeah, I want nothing. You're drunk enough as it is. You're not my dad. You can't tell me what I can or can't do. Beatrice Albert, stop drinking right now. Yes, Mom. Now go sleep in the car. We're almost done here. But, m Mom. Go. <laughs> Bye, bad nerder. Bye, Miss Betty. It actually worked. If I didn't know she wouldn't remember anything tomorrow, I'd be afraid of retaliation. Although I'm curious. Why do you call her Miss Betty? It makes her sound like a teacher or something. Etiquette? I don't know. There's always something about her that makes it feel right to call her that. Maybe it's the forehead? I see. Well, I gotta get things ready, if you'll excuse me. Good luck. Viver and lover. Oh, that's cool. We're closing. Damn it. Well, everyone's safe in a cab. Uh, we are taking our leave, bartender. Thanks for providing such great service on such short notice. That's my job. Uh, you were interest you were interesting too. Well, thank you. I'll make sure to tell all our associates about the wonders of this place. Thank you, and please come again. We sure will. Send my regards to Miss Betty. Gladly. See you later then. Bye. All done? Yep. Seems like we got some new regulars. Yeah, it'd be nice if they came back, or we're still here when they want to come back. You've been acting weird all weekend, boss. Are you okay? I am, but the bar is not. What do you mean? Well, I guess you have the right to know. The BTC sent me a message on Friday. Valhalla hasn't been bringing in much income the past, last few months, which means that we are at risk of being wiped off the map. Damn. That one-liner at the end, which means we're at risk for being wiped off the map. Cut to black. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, if you guys enjoyed that, uh, it was pretty cool. We still have, uh, if you look here, the Anna demo uh, deal. Uh, so we're going to do that next. Uh, and that may or may not be our last fall episode, because there might be like one extra episode after that uh, with the uh, Anna Unless there's, like, surprising kickback to get all the endings, which we could do. Uh, I'm not against doing that. I would just need to look up guides and stuff and figure out uh, the exact steps I need to take and how complicated it is. Like, Steins Gate was kind of easy, because it's like, alright, just follow this, these exact steps um, to do that. But it might be just, like... Um, it might be interesting. And I don't know if all the endings have different stuff throughout or if it's just the ending you know you know some games like when they have different endings it's like the whole game is different um so i don't know uh, we'll have to see if that's something that we want to do uh but for sure we're gonna do anna and then maybe the one after if it exists i gotta go though i've been talking for way too long thank you guys so much for watching if you guys enjoyed this episode please hit the like button subscribe if you haven't done so already and i hope to see you guys later peace out you guys